The Losers Bracket Final, Heroes of the Storm in the CCL. The tournament is slowly coming to a conclusion. We have a bit more Heroes of the Storm action ahead of us, though. Another best of five series in the Losers Bracket. The Loser Bracket Final, the winner of the series, will advance to face off against Simplicity in the Grand Final. And we're, of course, going to find out if it's Wild Heart Esports or Crowd Control. On the left side, the blue team here in Battlefield of Eternity. Our first map in the best of five. Zergling on Malthale, Unaverted on Mephisto. We got Buds on Mediv. Justin on Mayev and Weary Day on Mel Furion. And over on the right side of the map, crowd control with X-Ray on Deckard Kane, Dino on Cassia, De Quasa on Sonia, we got Ruzzo on Hanzo, and Lauba is playing a May. Now, as usual in all of the games, a quick caveat, as you guys already know if you followed the CCL in any kind of fashion, this is all played out on the North American Heroes of the Storm server, which of course means that players from Korea and from Europe have to play cross-server, and therefore have quite a bit of delay that they have to fight with. Now that we had other tournaments in Europe, for example, with Meta Madness and also the Master Clash starting up again, it became quite obvious how much it actually impacted a lot of these guys. Since the first thing that happened is that a lot of the European players started to go back on their normal heroes. For example, we saw a lot more Tracer and also Zeratul in the drafts where they don't have a picking disadvantage. But either way, they committed to the tournament. Obviously, they were okay playing with that in the times of Corona, but also where Blizzard more or less abandons uh, Heroes of the Storm esports. It just means we don't have a lot of offline finals where everybody can play international on a play on a level playing field. That's a bit unfortunate, but again, it is, it is what it is. So now we'll see what exactly happens in this tournament. First of all, we have now the stacks coming in with the Thunderstroke on Dino's side. And we have Medivh also stacking. So as traditional, you will see... Actually, with Sonya now rotating down to the bottom of the map, we're going to see them fight for uh, both of the camps, potentially. Traditionally, you see a trade, but not this time. The red team is able to take this one. Or are they? Well, they're trying to re-engage onto the point, but it seems like we're going to see a kill against Lauba. He goes down first, as usual. Immediately eliminated, and... Well, that's that. So, yeah, job well done. Easy one. Now we got a one kill to zero, but the camp at least went over to crowd control, so they got that. They weren't able to save their main tank, but they were able to take the camp, and Dainu also got quite a few stacks out of this one. So, no problems for them. But either way, at this point, we have the top lane established again with our two solo laners. Malthale goes up against Sonya here, whereas Medivh is continuing his stacking at the bot lane. And Butts is already sitting at 19. See a ton of Medivh players lately that went up to 30, 35 stacks and then lost their lives in a team fight just before they completed the quest. So you really gotta be careful, especially towards the later stages of the quest completion, that you lock in those final points so that you can spend your shields a little bit more towards your teammates too. Anyways, with level 4 talents in, the first objective is also being announced and then it's time to go for the shaman camps right away. And with that, of course, the opportunity to also take the first few structures down. Whoever takes Immortal number one gets the opportunity. Crystallizes in, we got the heat transfer, usual setup for May. Lauba still sitting at the bottom together with Dainu, who continues to stack. And of course, on top of this, we're also seeing the slam build for Sonya. Deckard hasn't made a choice yet. So, uh, Sapphire, uh, sorry, the Ruby, yeah, he actually goes for it, is a pretty popular talent here, but we've also seen a lot of shielding potion, of course. So in this case, we have the Ruby set up and the objective is on, which also means that Hanzo is not going to try and do his thing. But the push at the bottom of the map is pretty strong from Wildheart. So they're not moving into the middle of the map for the objective immediately. They're trying to take at least a few of the structures down. When it comes to immortal damage, Hanzo in particular is obviously going to lead the charge here. But on the team fight side, Mayev will have a huge impact on all of this. And Buds can help the team to engage and disengage with good portal usage. So, yeah. Dino dodging out on the stun here. Lauba still tanking a bit of the damage, but as you can see, they are ahead now. They've taken the halftime show. Easily at that. Nice lockdown. Oh my god, beautiful. What a sexy double kill here. Really nicely done. Well played, and that was just fantastic. Deckard Kane setting all of this up. Good on X-Ray. Really nice move from him. They're trying with the second one, but we're going to have a closer look at this one. I mean, just look at this particular setup from Deckard Kane. Slowing them down first, rooting them in place, and then Cassia comes in and gets the easy kills here, which leads to a big immortal for the red team. Nicely done. Seriously. Really, really nice setup from them. 
26 stacks already for uh, for the uh, for Cassia. Level 7 talents I am, 34 stacks on uh, Malvale. Uh, <laughs> he wishes. Mediv has 34 stacks. No, Malvale. I mean, Malvale with 34 stacks on the 10 or something. Yeah, yeah that would be that would be a thing to see. Zero cooldown. Screw it, boys. Insta. Ra -ta 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 -ta. Last rites for everybody. It's gonna be. Uh, he's gonna be the Oprah of death. You get a last rites. You get a last rites. Everybody gets the last rites. Yeah, that would be nice. No, but yeah, Medivh is stacking nicely. He's doing well. Needs to be careful now, of course. 37 in the stacks for now. And off we go. The fort is down, and this just showcases how powerful these early immortals can be if you grab one with a proper shield. And they had a massive one on uh, this one. But here we go. Uh, the kill against Sonya. Rutsu's in trouble too. I mean, they're dying for a good cause here, but they could have fallen back after the fort. Now they're engaging into all of this, and I'm not quite sure why. Medivh has already completed his quest as well. But, yep, they are losing two heroes on the retreat. Dainu, is he gonna get away? I don't think so. No, he gets tethered back in, and that's a kill against Cassia, which makes it a triple for Wild Hard Esports. I mean, I gotta say, this one... They should have seen that one coming. I mean, while at eSports gave all the signs of, hey, we would like to turn this, the only thing that they maybe didn't do is send some snail mail. So, <laughs> there were all the indicators and signs that they should just back off. The Immortal wasn't really going to do anything anymore. If you look over to the left, I mean, the wall is destroyed, so that's good. If that's really worth the three deaths, I highly doubt it. It means that the blue team has now taken the lead in experience. Quest is nearly completed for Malthil at this point. But yeah, they got a bit too greedy at that bot lane push. We're hoping to maybe set a kill up and then push it further. But after the destruction of the four, they should have just said, okay guys, this is pretty much as good as it gets for us. But either way, experience might be the same, but there's of course a structural disadvantage now for Wild Art Esports that they have to play around. They're down here, Butts starting his engage. Bottom of the map, okay. Everybody rotating top side. It's gonna become a five versus five battle again. And... Uh, I gotta admit that if during the next objective Cassia can stack Dino, he's a stack monster, we all know that, but he's at 38 stacks at the 7 minute mark. That is pretty solid, especially considering that he didn't have that many fights. We had a fight over the Immortal and a fight over the camp at the bottom, but he's really putting the numbers in, and that's a good progress for his part. So if he can get a bit more done when the objective is being fought over, maybe in a stalemate around the level 10, that could become nasty in the late game for Wild Art Esports. I mean, either way, if you're looking at the uh, setup, we got the Dorans of Hate now, the last rides are kicking in. No real surprises on the side of the red team. We have again, by the way, the Ice Wall, which is now way more common these days. Trying to just set something up for the rest of the team, especially, of course, with heroes like Hanzo and others. They got Kane also, you know, the old resident sleeper over here. Four kills to two. Yeah, fights are slowly coming in. Yeah, Medivh gets attacked, portals out, good on him. And the stacking is a little bit slow on Cassia right now. Dino gets some damage pushed out, but he wasn't really able to get a lot of Lightning Furies connected. Not really a lot of skirmish battles for him. Maybe he had a chance now with Lauba creating some space for him. Dino keeping the position nicely in the back. Blue team has now started to defend their own immortal because it's already incredibly low. So once again, crowd control is taking the advantage on the objective. And they are trying to push the top out even further. Everybody is just moving back to uh, one of the fountains and taps quickly before they're re-engaging. But that allows the blue team to drop quite a bit of damage on this immortal. They might just be able to win this one. Then again, here's the fight. Again, uh, nature's cure being used. Leyline is out. All right, so far so good. He can still start to poke this out. Arrow! Ooh, yeah, that arrow. Completely dodged. No chance. Nicely done. But they are locking in a potential kill with the last rights against Deckard Kane. The first stack acquired for Malthale as Malfurion falls. The turnaround attempt against Dequaza, but with the kill against the kill, it seems that Zergling is the next one to die. The aspect of death goes down, but so does Sonya. Oh, but gets murdered by Cassia. Here we go. Big action coming from both of the teams. As it seems that crowd control is able to lock in another immortal. Immortal number two now coming in. Job well done. All right. So here we go. That's where we already have our six kills to five. They're all going to move up to the top. We have 28,000 for Cassia in terms of damage. 22k for Mephisto. 
And Cassia has pushed out another lane at the bottom, but of course it's all about the top fort now. If they can take that one down too, which it would mean that most of those... Uh, honestly, most of those fountains would just be removed from the middle of the map. They would always have to move into the middle over here towards the gate on the blue team side in order to make that work. The talent disadvantage doesn't really help their case. This is going to be rough for Wildheart Esports. Defending here is not going to be easy at all. Old Man How has the Ancient Blessings right there and the fort is gone. I mean, they haven't really put up any resistance and how could they? They need to be careful that they're not losing any time, any heroes now. Arrow connects but gets cleansed out by the Nature's Cure right away. A good kill from Malthael. Well played here. Great job. That's the second kill and therefore 10 seconds cooldown reduction already on it. Decker <laughs> telling stories again that nobody wants to hear. Oh, when I was younger. Shut up, old man. So, <laughs> everybody had sleep, but yeah, they could they could move away. Use it as a defensive tool. It was kind of it's kind of funny when it's used, you know, as a setup for uh, an apocalypse for any other AOE spell. It's always kind of awesome. Not so much in this case though. We already got the polar vortex over here, and yeah, yeah. They got Kane is is telling everybody the stories of the war once again. Back when I was young. <laughs> Shut up. It slapped around a little bit. <laughs> it's like, yeah, let grandpa talk, kids. It's fine. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, seven kills against five. And the leading experience is still here for crowd control. X-ray. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Blue team, they're getting pressure on all the lanes now. There's catapults and camps pushing in. You can see how aggressive crowd control is posturing now, since they know about it too. And they're just saying, hey, maybe we can already open that wall up a little bit. If Dainu can just poke slowly against the wall, one tower is down, they want to go for another, then all they need is another objective, and they're likely going to take the down. So, yeah, that's pretty much what they need. Anyways, there comes the tether again. Justin wants to force the fight. At the same time, the wall is down. Didn't catch anybody. The arrow catches one. There's potentially killing his lower. No, the last rites does not finish him off. Ah, oh, stay a while and listen. Nobody wants to listen to me. Malfurion is also dead. Okay, and that is a follow-up. 15 to 14 any moment now. They're behind in kills, that's the funny part actually. With the triple kill earlier, we now have Wild Art Esports ahead in kills, but it doesn't really matter. Two of the keeps are down, and now it's the next Immortal that spawns, and with another 10 seconds before the support is back, it's not really a good look for Wild Art. They're trying to prevent the halftime show from already being locked in, but this is of course a huge risk that they're taking right now. It's a pretty big risk. You need to be very, very careful with that. They're trying to instead focus down on the bottom and take some hit points off the red team's Immortal. But instead, we have Zirkling attacked here. Ah, uh, Portal's not getting used, but he gets out anyways. I mean, good for him. If he dies there, he's in trouble. But we have the inevitable end now being used. We got, in terms of damage, 30,000 now for Mephisto. And 35,000 for Cassia. So, let's see. Everybody's starting to move towards the camps again. But look how low this thing is. I mean, seriously, this thing is nearly destroyed. Like, that big of an immortal shield could mean game. It's only 12 minutes in. They're trying to play aggressive right now. I really feel that Wildheart Esports is realizing, guys, we need to do something a bit YOLO or we're not going to win this game. If we are playing it safe from here on out, this is not going to look good for us, no matter what we do. And level 16 is, of course, soon going to be ready for crowd control, which is why they delayed the fight in the first place. Now that they have it, they're moving in to try and take the battle. Arrow connects. Nature's Cure is out. Old man, again, trying to slow everybody down here. And Unaverted is trying to get away. The ley line has also been utilized, but of course that only means that there's more space and room for crowd control to take the immortal. And now, while that esports is in deep shit. Because, well, maybe they can get a kill here. Yeah, last right, and goodbye, Cassia. All right, that's how you set a defense up. Not if you lose Mephisto, on the other hand. Camp gets stolen, Mephisto is dead, so is Medivh. That is the worst case scenario right now. Because top side is already getting pressured by the camp and catapults, and now the immortal is going to make an appearance too. You're up against an opponent that rocks a two-level lead any second now, which gives them a stats advantage. And on top of that, you have a talent advantage to go up against. Not really great for you. So yeah, that is kind of unfortunate. Eight kills to eight down at the bottom of the map. That's already where we have another camp pushing in over here. That's the same thing. The keep is down. They want to go for core, obviously. Three stacks on Martha L is kind of neat, but again, they're not going to get more than that. 
And, yep, that's the end of my F2. That's the end of the game. I mean, there's no way they're saving this one. The Immortal alone is most likely going to crush the core here. Shields are already gone. So, it seems like crowd control is going to take the lead in this best of five here. Now, our Heroes of the Scorpion is about to end. Maybe with another kill against a Quasa. Nope. Spin to win. And that is it. Game number one locked in as crowd control takes the lead on Battlefield of Eternity, ladies and gentlemen. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Kalda TV. Game number two in our Losers Bracket Final. CCL Heroes of the Storm continues with Sky Temple as the second map. On the left side, we got Zergling on Urel. The blue team is currently down in this best of five. We have Justin on Diva, Miri Day on Stuk of Bots on Tychus, and Unaverted on Kroby. Very, very different setup again, but they're still sticking to their non tank convention that Wildheart really loves to play. On the right side of the map, crowd control with X Ray on Brightwing. He's got the Quasa on Sonia. Dino again on Cassia. Ruts is also stacking. He went into Season Marksman with Falstad. And we got Lauba on May. Okay, so let's have a bit of a look of how this game is going. It honestly feels that the hero pool is a little bit smaller now on the NA server for players like Dino, but I'm pretty sure that he's very, very happy with his Cassia. He's been playing it on the European server also a lot. Might not be able to rely on a Tracer or Zeratul play on the NA server as much as he does on the European side. But still with Cassia, he's a stacking monster as I said previously. Did a lot of work in the last game too and this has also been a true and tried hero for him in the European tournaments. But right now when we're looking towards the blue team, we have Stukov as a fantastic support of course again. Yeah, he's just great. And we've seen some variation now also with the builds, especially in the newest patch. There's of course now the low blow in level 1 that we've seen making a bit more of an experience, which leads oftentimes to a lurking arm setup on level 7. The level 13 talent was more or less a lockdown anyways. I mean, you needed to have that. Any Stukov that... Honestly, any Stukov that doesn't pick the, uh, uh, the thingy on 13 doesn't know what he's doing. Vibrant reaction. There we go. For just a second, I was like about to say growing the station. I was like, no, wait a second, that's the level 7 talent. Okay, so either way, three stacks for Falstead. We're gonna keep an eye on Rutsu and see what he can do with this. Falstead, of course, gives you some control over potential boss fights too. Kinda nice to have. A lot of these games come down to a boss battle. Since if you are falling behind or you are ahead, at some point there's a good chance that you're gonna make a decision to go for the boss, either because you feel safe enough to take it, or simply because you're saying, hey, we're losing this game at this pace, we can't evenly trade into our opponent, so let's try and go for a bit of a Hail Mary move on the boss, and if you then have some boss control tools in your team, then that's always kind of nice. So, that's pretty much that. Four kills to three, uh, sorry, <laughs> level four now. <laughs> Not the kills, Kyla, no, 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 no. Sorry, first time, first time Heroes of the Storm cast over here, I don't quite know what the numbers mean yet. <laughs> but yeah. The bigger they are is this time abandoned, so instead they're going straight in for In the Rhythm and starting to take that. We're also having at the same time the Hammer Gains coming in for a little bit more lane sustain for Falstead, who has to deal with Urel in this case. Nice timing from the blue team, I really like it. Wildheart Esports with the perfect timing on the Mercenary camp allows them to use the Mercenary and the Towers to defend against the opponent's camp and then push with their camp mostly intact on the top lane. So really, really well done. Pretty sexy. And let's go. We got zero stacks, by the way, on Tychus. Our Renegade didn't get a chance yet to fire the minigun up, so uh, Buds is still waiting for someone to help him with the setup. The first towers are down, though, and that's good for Wildheart. Taking these towers down is actually kind of neat for them, so yeah, nice start. Uh, a little bit more aggression happening over here. The explosion does some damage, but not at all, you know, so yeah. Tigers gets a few stacks together, it's good for him. Cassia, of course, is also continuing the progress, especially with her defending against those four at the top. It was guaranteed that she would lock some in. But now that the objective is up, this is where we're going to see a bit more of the party happening. X-Ray and also Dain, uh, sorry, Rutsu on Global Heroes means that they have some more wiggle room as the second objective comes in. Falsa can always fly into the middle, but right now everybody's just duking it out up at the top and Ural plus Falsa make rotations between the middle and the bot lane as both are aiming for level 7 talent. It's pretty much the only reason why they're not joining the fight. You want to get the level 7 quickly so that your team has an advantage and both are mirroring those movements. But Wildheart Esports is now up at the top, taking control and pushing this one back. 
Zero kills in this game, by the way. Not a single kill thus far. And, yep. More experience taken. And they completely abandoned the top. Which means that the four has now taken some damage. But, of course, there's fights happening over the spot. Yeah, nice trap over here. And they try to go for vision and for the second temple. As they're coming in here. Quick attack against Buds. Gets body blocked. And... Oh my god, really? Buds gets away. Nice. Good escape from him. And the Quasar and Lauber are both incredibly low. If anybody can move in against them, they are going to die for sure. Instead, it's Dino that gets isolated. But even he makes it out. Oh my god. First objective is nearly completely taken. We haven't seen a single kill just yet. The players playing around each other the entire time. Falstad has not moved in yet into that fight. Moved away early. And Wildheart is walking away with structure after structure. They are nearly taking... They are taking the fort at the top. And they're also doing more damage in the middle of the map. As the bird is now flying in. But Ruzzo is immediately in trouble. And gets collapsed upon by the rest of the blue team mates. And this is bad news for crowd control. They had a good showing on Battlefield of Eternity. But at least on this map, things are not looking all that great for them. Even without kills, Wildheart Esports has now taken a significant lead in structures. Uh, here comes the jump again. Maybe we're finally getting the first kill. No, still not happening. 25 staffs for Cassia, 15 for Falstead. Rutsu focusing on the waves here. And at the top side, Ural is still pushing this out too. So yeah, it's an interesting situation that we're looking at here. Both of the objectives were pretty much exclusively taken by Wildheart. Barely any shots fired by crowd control. And that is not really giving them a big lead in experience yet, but it's going to give them control over the top lane, which is going to be important for the second objective, which spawns at the bottom of the map. And in addition to that, it's also putting uh, the red team into a bit of a weird and awkward spot where they have to make sure that they are winning some of the upcoming objectives, or they're always going to be a step behind and will have eventually to decide whether they want to throw a Hail Mary on the boss, whether they want to YOLO into a team fight what the play is going to be. And the thing is getting worse. I mean, look at this. They're getting some structures for free again. This is the worst thing that can happen to you on this map. If your opponent takes your structures apart without paying a price and without losing the objective at all. So this is really bad news right now for crowd control. They're losing way too much here. I mean, honestly, this is disastrous. Level 10 abilities are in on both sides and we get the bunny hop for D.Va. But this thing is down to 20% of its HP. That is... I mean, again, even without kills, this is how far ahead you can get on the map without kills. And I know some people are looking at the kills and they're saying like, well, what are you talking about? Nobody killed anything yet. It's level 11. Look at that. Cloud control is even ahead. But you got to really understand how the objective on this map works to appreciate how far behind crowd control is right now. They are in such a bad spot. They lost the top fort, they lost the wall in the middle, and hit points on the fort, and at the bottom of the map they lost the wall, the fountain, and nearly the entire thing. So this is a disaster for crowd control. They have to win the objectives now, or they are going to lose the entire outer ring of defense without Wild Heart Esports even getting nicked over here. So, huge problems now. At least a little bit of counter pressure is happening at the top, so the wall has been destroyed here, but even that camp push didn't really do enough for them. At the bottom of the map, we are still seeing the battle unfolding in front of us over the next objective. And this is a bit of a, I don't want to say a do or die moment, but it's still a really important one for crowd control. Because if they lose out on the temple shots, that means that both of the forts on the outer defense are going to fall. And then we're talking keeps. And they can't really afford that. And you can see they're giving this up already. So the fort is down. There's also no fountain where they can tap anymore. So Wildheart still has a fountain on the left side where they can always just jump back, tap quickly, get some mana up at the top. This is bad news too as Dino gets attacked. That's the first kill, isn't it? Yeah, it has to be. Yes, but it's against Urel. Urel is the first one to fall. Falstead has not flown in, by the way. He's at the top. Rutsu is trying to stack his level 1 and take some structures down. And one of the reasons why it's actually amazing that Walter Esports lost the hero here. They're still taking the objective, though. So, one fort is down. Rutsu is at least doing some structural damage up at the top line. And can now start to move back in. But in the middle, that fort isn't looking too great either. Now, the shots are finally being taken over. But we got Urel back on the map too. It's a bit of an awkward one. Single kill and the level 13. But you look at the map and you look for structures. And crowd control is in trouble. What they need is they need to win some team fights And they need to start pushing some structures. The destruction of the fort at the top has been a step in the right direction. For sure.
28 stacks for false set isn't bad either, and this is exactly what we need to see from, uh, from uh, crowd control if they want to come back. Take some of the structures down. So now they're slowly but steadily starting to claw their way back into this on a structural level, and this is looking okay. 43 stacks for Dino is also solid. We got the level 13 talents now on both sides, which gives us indeed the Violent reaction here. And now the move towards the top from Wood. So they, they need to use their globals, and that's pretty much what they're doing. Damage output, you can really see with 21,000 for Cassia, she's the main damage dealer by far, but look at the siege damage that we have on false that side. That's him just rotating the entire time. Now Urel on the blue team side is attempting to catch up with this, but are they really making a play for the boss now? Uh, I'm not so sure over here. So they might commit to this one, but with false and Brightwing, yeah, they gotta be careful if they really want to make that move. And false that should fly in soon, they have full vision. So, Falsehood is gonna fly any second. He needs to use the Gust here. Brightwing has already started to jump in. Falsehood needs to get on the way here. Odin has been used already. Falsehood is still not here. Is now starting to fly. Might even be a bit too late. No, perfect timing on him. Can Gust, but yep, there's the bunny hop. That one gets... <laughs> gets quickly denied by May, and they take the boss. That's how you steal a boss, baby. Yeah, the bunny hop made him, of course, unstoppable, so the gust didn't do anything, but it doesn't really matter if you then come in and just simply pop the ice wall here. Take another quick look at that. Look at that beauty. Gust is out, and there it is. Ice wall, and the boss is taken. Red team steals it. All the work done by Wildheart Esports, and then the boss gets stolen. Now they're level ahead. Forster dies, though. Blue team still hasn't given up on this yet. And they quasar dies, too. Nice double kill. Well done. And that boss didn't really do a whole lot. Already gone. Uh, boss wasn't really as successful as they were hoping for. So at the same time, now that they lost two heroes, they're losing the fort in the middle. And let's not forget that with the temples activating another two seconds, there's a big opportunity for Wildheart to get even more structural damage. So, yeah, that is going to be a bit nasty. 56 stacks for Tychus. That's what we currently have as well. But bot lane is getting attacked. That's not going to let the keep get destroyed, but the wall is going to fall. And at the top of the map, we're still trying to make the play now too. So a bit of a body block happening. Again, Stukov, and he dies. 16s are ready for both sides. Falsehood is following up with the afterburner after he went initially for the giant killer with the level 1 talent. As I said, this is exactly the kind of auto attack build that you need to go for. We've seen, I talked about this in the previous video sometimes, stacking on level 1 and then completely ignoring the giant killer and going for a mage build on 13 and 16, which obviously makes zero sense unless you decide at some point that you have to fully focus on the boomerang and just play around the opponent. In this case, though, it's a full commitment onto the traditional build here, and they can move down to the bottom of the map and take Diva down, which gives Roots even more stacks together with the wave. So he's in a position where he's about to complete the quest talent. And Cassia is stacking pretty nicely too, it's sitting at 67 now. They get another kill, nice! Staggering the deaths now against Wildheart. It's a bit of a back and forth here on Sky Temple, and I kind of like it. Now with them moving towards the uh, mid lane, trying to take the uh, fort down. We still have shots up at the top, they're letting those slides for now, trying to take the structures down first, even without it. And, yep, it's gonna be kind of interesting. Down here at the bottom of the map, camps are taken again, Sony has taken over up towards the top. 36,000 damage for Tigers in the meantime, Cassia is still holding the top numbers though. But they control the map right now. Red team is very defensive in their posturing. We have a full level lead now for crowd control. Five kills to two, they were really struggling at the beginning of the game uh, with structural damage, but now they've started to take control of this. They're still slightly behind on structures, but the boss steal was great, the kills that they got were heavily impactful, and that can really lead to them now taking the upper hand here, and maybe even establish a 2-0 lead in the series. Keep in mind, this is a best of five Heroes of the Storm match here at the CCL tournament. So right now, we already got that set up. We have everybody rotating from camp to camp to camp. The Siege Giants are taken first, and now they're making their play over towards the Bruiser camp. 70 stacks by now for uh, Dainu. Full slam setup for Sonya. And also sizzling attacks in, uh, plus the diverting power. 
But it seems that the blue team is totally willing to just wait this one out. And this surprises me a bit, considering that they are still a level behind. Because that means pretty much that you are up against level 20 at some point. And with two globals on the other side, Macro is also not really your friend. So they should be very interested in forcing a fight and trying to win a battle here. Nobody's dealing with Falset, for example, at the bottom of the map. And he had plenty of time to escort some of the siege camps out. Now, Urel is finally making a move for this, but it's still a bit of a weird one because that reaction comes late. And the level 20 talent would allow them to potentially go for a boss. Yeah. With a minute to go for the boss, that's a potential boss play that you can get with your storm talents. Okay. That's not too bad. I mean, both of the teams have slowed down a little bit, as you can see. There's no objective on the map, there's no boss on the map. So both of them are just a little bit more laid back. But crowd control will definitely think about trying to claim a boss now. They got the Ice Wall up again. They got also uh, the Mighty Gust. I mean, that's honestly the moment to make a play either for keep, for boss, or anything else. Once you have the advantage, you should try to run with that. And make that happen. I mean, boss is up in what? 10? Yeah, 10 seconds. Okay, top side. Sonya still pushing this out a little bit. An entire level is missing. I mean, honestly, that's the opportunity. Now we have the level 20. This is really your chance to get farther ahead in the game. And boss would likely give them a keep. He could go for the objective too. Should maybe leave Brightwing on uh, the on the spot for a little bit longer. Then make the play for the boss. They're already starting to sniff this one out. And I don't understand why they're waiting this long. Okay, there they go. Making the play. Wild Hunt Esports, are they going to move in for it? Falset has to be careful and needs to position him properly. But it doesn't really seem like the blue team is trying to make a play there. But obviously they know what's happening since nobody's firing shots through the objective anymore. They know where they are. There's only one spot for crowd control to be at. So the boss gets taken. Now they can jump back into the team fight and try to force it. Yeah, if they knew. But yeah, they go for the siege champ at the bottom of the map. It's 20 versus 20 in just a second, but with the play around the boss, you can now try to at least get a few keeps here. It's kind of the, the play that they want to go for. Uh, so yeah, let's check. They're splitting a little bit. Gotta be careful as long. I mean, splitting is fine. You just need to make sure that you don't lose the hero before the fifth member joins the battle. And especially Falstead, he's dishing out a lot of damage in the middle of the map now. Yeah. He could take that for that keep down. And they are rotating in. Everybody is focusing on the boss defense. So the mid lane is open. That allows Dainu and others to do some work. It might not be enough though. Yeah. They can't take it. They need someone else to do a bit more damage. But they didn't want to be forced into a fight here. So at least for now. There is no keep that has been destroyed. The bunny hop gets upgraded into the stop and hop right here. And, well, let's have a bit of a look at what Falstead is going to do. It's the annoying Globals. I talked about them at the beginning of the game. If you have the Globals, you can focus on macro so much now. And that's more or less what they are trying to do here. They got Falstead up at the top, pushing this one out, making sure that he's in a good spot where he can push a lane, flying out a bit because they have no vision of where exactly the blue team players are. But, well, at least for now, Wildheart is making a very aggressive play. False it there for also Hearthstone's back. Can I try to make his play? I'm wondering if at any point he's going to try to fly behind them and gust them in. We've seen a few attempts by false stats. I mean, we've always seen attempts by, fa by false stats like this. Yeah, the lack of fights that we are experiencing now also ensures that Dino doesn't get any additional stacks together. False set in the meantime is sitting at 55, so that's pretty good for him. The auto attack damage is getting higher. Obviously right now he's only sitting at 14,000, which makes a whole lot of sense considering that he wasn't part of most of the battles. He was just solo laning the entire time, pushing out, keep focusing on the wave clear, making sure that he controls the globals. I mean, just take out the, his, uh, the, the, the experience that he gathered. 21,000 experience, Blue Forcet alone. Urel pretty much on the same level with this, as you can see here. And now with the double temple activating and the camps that are being taken. That's pretty much what you would expect. Yeah, Urel is also pretty low in damage. I mean, on their energy doesn't, doesn't make any big difference either. Now we have 5 kills to 2. Falstead could fly in. Uh-oh, they got real problem on Sonya though. And Brightwing is too late. Nicely done. Sonya down. That was a great moment. Falstead therefore cancelling the fly in and realizing that he won't be able to help his teammates out here. He's going to achieve way more if he stays down at the bottom of the map and tries to use his global to push the lane out a little bit further. Yeah, but the top is also going to be a bit of a sore spot. 
both of the Tempers under the control of Wildheart. And that is gonna hurt. Falstad still waiting this one out. Wants to keep playing this really, really slow. They're poking around the middle. Top Templar has been abandoned. And Falstad gets free reign over the bot lane. Nobody is dealing with this. Wildheart is not dealing with this at all. Not even a little bit. That's a keep. And he could also go into the middle and get the second keep. That one, is, that's one boomerang right there. One boomerang. Then again, the shots are taking down the keep at the mid lane of the red team, and they're now focusing on the top. Falstad has taken the keep in the middle too, so both of the teams are likely to lose uh, two keeps. This is getting insanely close. Yeah, the camp and the remaining shots take the keep down, and honestly, how many shots are left? That's a keep. They're taking all the keeps down. That's the final keep going down too. Yep, all the keeps destroyed on the red team side. Still have one left for Wildheart. <laughs> this didn't look as if it would be that close of a game early on. Boss is back in another minute. So another minute on the boss as well. I mean again, as long as you take your opponent's keeps down too, it means that everybody has catapult spawning consistently. The team that is at a disadvantage now is crowd control because their top lane is going to be under pressure. Even their core nearly took some damage. The shield was about to be taken down. Camps are becoming incredibly important right now. And of course those catapults too. But it's the boss that we're looking for again with 35 seconds until it's back up. That's a huge thing to play around. And we've already seen the tools in action that crowd control can bring to the table to control the space. With wind, the mighty gust, wind tunnel. Plus also on the other side now the shatter, the ice wall. And there's, there's backdoor potential. You can always try to just simply go for the core here. But boss is up in another 10, 11. Everybody is posturing around it. Falsehood is the only one that's sitting at the top because he can fly in. And he's of course attempting to take as many of these catapults down as he possibly can to relieve the top lane pressure. Wildsight is in the position where they could make a play for our boss. Red team is instead going to try to deny that if possible. And if of course they can get Falsehood to a good spot, it would be half the battle here. But yeah, this is getting very, very tricky and I like it. <laughs> Worthy game for a loser's bracket final. So 170,000 damage now. Forza has 220,000 siege damage. And of course he's stacking his level 1 as well. So when he joins the fight and uh, goes for the activatable, he's going to have a lot of damage that he brings to the table with that. Okay, so. Let's have a bit of a look here. Yeah, he's at 67 stacks. 67. Which is kind of rough. Okay. And there we go. I mean, at this point, honestly, I mean, with the ping disadvantage that the European teams have on the um, North American years of the Storm server here, the question is, of course, do you just want to focus on the macro game at this point? You're so late into the game that a single fight can decide the fate of this, and you have two globals. Maybe they could focus on them a little bit more, but they're going to try to make the play through the wind tunnel. And let's see if they can, because that boss is likely going to end the game. The problem is those two altars that just spawned also are going to end the game if they are taken. They got to set this up, and they missed the ice wall a little bit. And the bunny hop is in, May is down, the upgrade on the bunny hop coming through, and that is... Guys, that's game. Core is already down, the shots are fired, and that is Wildheart with a victory. They won the boss, they took both of the temples, and they win the second game on Sky Temple and tie the series. Game number three, Tomb of the Spider Queen, everybody. Here we go. The series is tied. Our third Heroes of the Storm match in this best of five series is once again going to determine which team takes the lead here. We have the blue team, Wild Hadi Sports with the Circling on Sonia. We got Very Day on Stukov. We got Buds on Brightwing, Unaverted on Chromie, and Justin on Diablo. Towards the right side of the map, Deckard Kane, played by X-Ray, Dino on Cassia, again for the third time in a row. De Quasa on Diva, Lauba on Jojo, and Ruzzo is playing Zarya. 
All right, so again, this is the loser's bracket final, which means that whoever wins this match is going to advance to the grand final where they have to go up against Simplicity in a best of seven. Where Simplicity has a 1-0 lead in the match coming from the winner's bracket. Winner's bracket advantage, therefore. Nice wave clear with Jojo, obviously. We still got a couple of other heroes that can also chip in quite a bit. But on the other side, it's all about the Diablo setup. How much can he do here? Dibbles, of course, always a great hero if you have a player that knows how to properly play him. And, well, let's have a bit of a look of what we can expect here from uh, Justin as the game continues. I really enjoy a lot of the Diablo plays that we are seeing lately, especially when we're talking about um, Gia and Masquerade. Masquerade in particular had some fantastic games on the European server where they single-handedly made sure that the Lord of Terror had that name for a reason. Uh, in this game now, Zarya gets a bit attacked. It's always kind of nice if you have that extra shield, especially once you kick in with the level 4 talent. You have the speed barrier that allows you for engage and disengage. Which is always awesome. And, well, with that, let's go. Bottom of the map. Uh, Zirkling is pretty much alone. And in the middle is just like the usual brawl as the teams are rotating between the middle and the top lane in an attempt to dominate the wave clear battle, get the gems together and make the opponent rea uh, react instead. Okay, so now down to the bottom of the map, a little bit of a chromey setup as Dequaza was trying, as they were trying to gank up on Dequaza, that so far didn't happen. Early commitment to the camp too, by the way. Sonia's the only one who's still holding the uh, top side. If you take the camp, you can always try to go maybe for a turn in as well. But right now we have Stukov trying to do the same thing here. Solo, by the way, it's gonna take a while. Finally getting some assists as Zergling and Unaverted are both making their way over towards the camp. But it's already moving through the middle for the red team and that allows them to now move down to the Siege Giants and claim them as well. Yep, getting all the camps over here. Okay, Diva is already sitting tight. I mean, going after the good old Overwatch rule, the red team has to uh, to lock this game in, right? The more Overwatch heroes you have, the better your team composition. So with Diva and Zarya in play, yeah. Deckard Kane is only playing older watch, so that doesn't really count. But with two heroes out of that universe, there's definitely a bit of a chance. Anyways, bot lane is getting heavily attacked. Wall is already opened up, so crowd control is coming out swinging with this one. Definitely trying to be a bit more aggressive. The level 4 hasn't been locked in yet for uh, Lauber. Uh, they are now pushing through that camp as Wildfire Esports has defended against the Cougars in the middle. Mm, yeah. Bot lane or 1 versus 1? I mean, again, one of the earlier games we didn't really have a lot of kills here, and I don't really think that's gonna change anytime soon over here either. They're yeah, both playing pretty laid back, but we are getting to a point where at least the red team has enough gems for a turn in. Seems like the blue team actually missed quite a few here. I mean, they're 10 gems behind, so they didn't really connect everything here. Yeah. Let's see what else they can pull off. Yeah, even trying to go for the kill against Zirkling, but he could get out. Sonya is such a staple in the meta now. It's actually insane. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, here comes the fight. Nice. Okay, they're trying to go for Dino, and Dino is down. Yeah, Dino is dead. First kill in the game. Wildheart Esports. Can they get a bit more? There's a few gems that were already turned in by crowd control, but every death on the red team side would now hurt, especially Lauber with the 26 gems needs to stay alive. But with Cassia still dead, maybe a chance to turn a few of those gems in. And Wildheart Esports doesn't really seem to do that. They're trying to make it happen with Sonya, and Zirkling was able to deliver 17 as well. But everybody else is still holding on to theirs. They got the earlier level 7, though. Well, with the exception of Diablo. There we go. Dibble's coming in with the di diabolical momentum. Pinpoint accuracy is now also through. A shielding potion, by the way, for Deckard Kane. And talking about Deckard Kane, he's already getting bullied again by Sonya. Yeah, the red head is getting feisty again. But the old man is making it out of harm's way. Kill against Zero, a little bit of a brawly setup. Both teams with enough gems to get the first web weaver wave. Nobody really committing to it yet. Everybody is just trying to get some kills in and deny the opponent from turning in. But there's honestly not really a whole lot of moves that are being made for the turning points yet. 
both of them just simply sitting tight, bottom of the map, the Quas are always, I mean he's always trying to isolate someone here, right, and Zirkling is moving in as Deckard Kane and Woods are attempting to get rid of their gems, that didn't really work out, in total they already delivered 48, so another 2 and Bob's your uncle, you're gonna get the web weavers on the match, but yeah, Diablo sitting at 22, and a turn in right now would go a long way. I mean, you would be in a position where you could finally also make sure that the kills that you get are stealing gems away on the other side. So 17 against against 48 turned in still. But the kill against Dino, that would be the dream for Wild Dog. That would be great. Dino's in trouble and he's down once more. I think it's the second time that he falls. The Red Web Weavers are going to come down anyways. A little bit unfortunate that Dino died just as they summoned them, but since the death timers are still fairly low, I suppose Dino is going to be back in time to get some fun here. So, yeah, we'll see. But anyways, let's check this out. The kills are a little bit tricky for crowd control. I mean, with two healers on the side of Wild Heart, it's rough. There's a lot of sustain, obviously, that you have there. So it's always tricky to get those kills in if you don't have the single target damage available to really move that in, but yeah, long and sustainable fights are currently a bit beneficial for Wild Heart because of that. First Web Weaver gets taken out right away, but the focus is at the bottom of the map, but the wall has already been opened up earlier with the help of those Siege Giants that we saw taken. So now they're starting to come in again for another potential kill. Zirkling, careful, yeah. They're not getting too much here, are they now? In the middle of the map, not a lot of ha has happened. Up at the top, wall is barely getting touched. Not really a great attack, guys. Not a lot has happened. Blue team also with the early level 10. Ah, crowd control used an entire turn and they get very little out of it. Very, very little. So, Falling Sword is now in. Can put some pressure on the back line. But this is a big chance for Wild Art Esports to get a turn in. And the thing is, they could technically also try to get a double turn in from here on out. They don't have enough gems for it yet. But they're close. Getting closer. If they get the next Web Weaver wave, then I'm pretty sure they're gonna get at, to that point very quickly. Lul Nado is in! Maybe we see the more Nados today. That would be kinda nice. Haven't seen uh, more Nados yet in a competitive patch ever since the the patch came out. But yeah, we got the Lul Nado already in action. And yeah, it's lulling around in the team fight a little bit, hitting absolutely nothing. I mean, <laughs> I don't think that it was planned like this. This did not do anything for them. Big fight shaping up on the other hand. Yep, and they go for X-Ray. Try to go for the fight. Apocalypse already coming out. Ooh, the, the, the mech is nearly down, but it is Chromie that dived first. Even the double support can't keep her alive. Chromie is dead. That's the kill on Diablo. And crowd control just popped off in the last fight here. Yeah, nicely done. Yeah, they hope they hope to get another target with the little nado, but they couldn't really. So uh, that's two kills they were able to lock in, and that gave them a bit of push power. Not sure if they're gonna try and turn in again. They have 53 out of the 55 gems that they need in order to make that work. But yep, not just yet. But yeah, everybody is just like looking for the turning point again. Every single gem that you can deliver is great. And look how many gems were actually lost on the other side. It's like 30, 40 gems that the blue team just lost. So that's a bit of a disaster for them. They're trying to finally get their Web Weaver Wave going. But it's always tricky when you are uh, giving up gems. Because they are your ticket back into the game if you're falling behind a little bit. Lauber nearly delivered 25 but got interrupted. The interrupt from Dainu costs him his life. Dainu is dead again. That's actually the third time. Is that the third time? Yeah, he died three times. Nobody else on the red team died. Dino's just getting farmed. Absolutely farmed right there. Okay. Uh, Brightwing is trying to deal with the bot lane. With the enormous amount of wave that Brightwing brings to the table. But since there's nobody else left, it's totally fine now. Can always jump in with the rest of them. Blue team is also getting ready for a web weaver wave now that both teams are close to level 13. Yeah, it's all about the lead now. The lead in the series. Who's going to take it? Lauber pushed out the top lane a little bit more, so the Web Weavers are going to spawn very close to the opponent's fort. And here we go. What can the blue team pull off with this one? There's going to be some bot lane relief, of course. But they also want to do some damage. And which lane are they going to choose for that? Starting to come into the middle, attempting to collapse for a target. But the Unstoppable is out. Lulnado is used, and therefore the Apocalypse is not doing anything. Nope. 
Not a box so it's pretty useless over there. I baited out some some cooldowns. But they were obviously hoping for a kill. It was a nice timing. I mean it pretty much sectioned off the entire wall there. Lauba jumping out now too. At the same time the kill against Dugov. Nice! Zarya plus Diva with the kill against the support. And that puts a stop to this. I mean, this is a slow one. We are 10 minutes in and we haven't seen a fort fall. Not one. Lauba's defeating the web weavers up at the top. Down here, the little nado is out again as X-Ray is saying, boys, leave it up to me. But that might be the first fault. For no, Valkyrie misses too. They're really trying, but both of the teams are not too eager to fight to the death here. We have three kills to three. No insane objectives that have popped up yet. The gem count couldn't be more different, by the way. 50 extra gems on the side of crowd control. That's what we're looking at right now. That's an insane advantage. And Lauba himself is more or less already delivering uh, enough gems to uh, get the web weavers. I mean, he didn't deliver all of them. We had another turn in at the bottom of the map, but still, it's kind of nasty. All right, so here we go. Three to three. Level 14 on both sides. Very, very even. But you need to do damage with those web weavers. This is the third wave now. If you don't do any damage right now, then when are you going to do it? That's pretty much the problem. Up at the top side, let's make it happen. That's where they have to try and take something up. Bot lane fort, by the way, has got to go down. Nobody's even defending that. That thing is so low that they're not even trying. They know that it's doomed. But here, trying to catch a hero again with a little nado. Not able to get that done. But they're coming in with the rest. Here we go. The action is in, they start to do some damage, they're zoning them out also with the diva explosion. There's the kill against Chromi. Unaverted goes down again. Bottom web weaver is still on the move and up at the top. We're gonna have another fort fall. Finally, crowd control gets a bit of value here. At the bottom of the map, we're having in the meantime Sonia taking care of it. That wall is getting attacked though. And let's see, mid lane, they're collapsing onto the fort once again. So apparently all three forts will be eliminated. Now the level 16 talents are ready for crowd control. There's no chance for a defense anymore by Wildheart in the mid lane. Yeah, jump well done. Damage output with 31,000. Cassia is currently second highest damage in the game. We have Sonya still leading the charge with the 39k. Slamming away the entire game. And well, let's have at it. Third wave can now come in. Third Red Weaver wave could come in. They got the position. They got the talent advantage. And they can set one, this one up easily. Lauber delivers 29 gems. Good for them. And they might even get a keep out of this. 12 gems to be delivered. De Quasa. They can't interrupt him unless they're going for an 8 bog, And I don't think so. Isn't even on cooldown. So, yeah. There's another Red Weaver wave. And this is the big one that has to be defended by Wild Hard Esports. They have to defend this one or they're going to be in trouble. Siege Giants, they want them. Well, they're not letting them leech. They're taking the fight here. Brightwing is jumping in. Web Weavers are coming down as we speak. Can they get the kill against Justin? That would be the dream now. But he still has the stacks on his baseline. Here comes the jump. They're trying to slow him down. And he's in bad shape here. Justin is about to go down. The old man hitting with the stick and then... Diva comes in and rattles through the machine guns. Obviously, he's going to be back, but he loses all of his souls. In the middle of the map, we got Buds on Brightwing. And, well, Trashwing needs to be a bit careful too, or she's going to be caught. But Web Weavers are now pushing through the bottom, pushing through the middle. Top lane, not really that dangerous. But you want to open these walls up. You want to go for a keep. And they are starting to work. Five versus five again, but the hit point pool is low. Here comes the attack. Quick condemn. But they can't suck him in deep enough. <laughs> and everything's open. Lulnado, finally with a bit of value, but not enough to prevent them um, or provide him with another kill opportunity. Their bot lane then again is in trouble. That keep is getting some serious damage push on it. I think they might... Are they actually going to lose this one? Yeah, it's going to be close. I think they can save it. At the top, on the other hand, the fight continues and the wall is open. Yeah, crowd control is getting some serious work done now. But they still have trouble to uh, deliver the final blow in these structures. But they opened every opportunity up now. Big damage at the bottom of the map. Now there's enough gems for the blue team to get a turn in themselves. So they can get one web weaver wave. They have five kills, two, three now. And are they making a play for boss? 
Boss is always a bit your Hail Mary move. If you feel you're so far behind that with normal means it's not possible for you anymore to win the game, then you can always try to force a battle on boss. If you win it, you have a ticket back into the game. If you lose it, well, nothing's lost anyways because you already said, hey, we're behind and uh, we're going to have trouble here. But with all the gems that the blue team is holding, I don't think they're going to go for a boss play just yet. Instead, they're engaging into the fight. Beautiful stun. And Dainu gets attacked again. What's going on in this game? Like, this is the fourth kill against Dino. 100% of the deaths on crowd control side is Dino. He gets caught way too often right now. They're trying to go for Lauba here. But yeah, maybe Lauba passed his death curse over to Dino. I don't know what exactly happened, but it is a bit of a disaster for the Cassia player. The turn in is ready. Zirkling is making it work. Bot lane still getting attacked. Lauba has to jump out and does, but yep, they're still trying to follow and Johanna is really low, but she still has the... Uh, oh, that could be... That could be... I think it's fine. I think the keep is just fine. Wow, that could have been a disaster. The Webweavers are probably going to push this one out. Yeah, that could have been the end of the bot lane keep. It's definitely going to be the end of the fort in the middle. This is the first structure, by the way, that Wild Heart Esports takes down. The first one. So, yep. Everybody's still straight in the middle. Web Beavers are doing some work. Level 20 isn't ready yet. Half a level behind. That's where we see the blue team. And they are all of a sudden the ones that are saying, you know what, guys? We're going to start to take this game. Because top lane fort is going to fall 100%. And they are still hoping that they can take the keep in the middle of the map down. Quest is completed for Diablo again as well. So Justin has a much better hit point pool now too. Yeah, they are starting to lose some hit point on this one. It's still a 5 versus 5 then again. And Zirkling has to be very careful too. Uh, by the way, just noting it, there's obviously no stacking for Dino in this game. I don't really think he would have gotten a whole lot of stacks either, considering how the game has been going so far. There is five kills against four. But they're desperately trying to go for level 20. They're very, very close. Uh, Alright, let's go. Big push coming in. And Web Weavers are busy at the top. Bottom Ford is also in slight trouble. Shouldn't really fall to this one. The Web Weavers are already gone, but they're still taking a bit more damage. Top lane has been opened up too. But here's the level 20. And now, of course, the big question. Do we go for the boss? Yes or no? Red team is maybe on the move. Nobody has enough gems for a turn in. There's, of course... Yes, there we go. More Nados, baby. Oh, yeah. That talent is fucking ridiculous at this point. And honestly, it's a little bit scary if you control the space of the boss with it. So I'm not quite sure how Wild Hunt Esports is going to react here. Especially since in addition to that, we also have the Heaven's Fury and the cooldown reduction there is great. So they go for the camp. I think the keep in the middle is gone. They could poke... Like, if they go boss, the keep in the middle is gone. Yeah, and they do. And the blue team is just waiting to see if anybody's reacting to all of this. And they're realizing that that's not the case. So they're just, well, let's take the keep. It's free. I wonder if they could go for Koa here and just try to sneak it. I uh, know, they're hearthstoning back. Boss has now been taken. Everybody is just like trying to hearthstone, cancel, hearthstone, cancel to see if someone makes a move for the core. If they have to retreat, the secret friends, the invisible friends for Brightwing and our alt too. They could also just uh, call this talent the imaginary friends and it would pretty much be the exact same thing. You know, pain, push comes to shove. And now the top lane is the big focus here. Lurkling is already sitting tight. Cooler reduction allows Lauba to jump around with his, uh, with his Jojo. Yeah, Lul Nado. They're lulling around a lot. One more Nado after another, as you can see. There's all Nados everywhere. Yeah, the land of the Lulz. They're trying to go for the kill against Stukov. Can't quite get it. Diva loses the pilot. Makes her way out. And the keep is obviously gone. Keep at the top lane is destroyed, but the keep at the bottom of the map is still in play, and someone has to deal with the catapults in the middle. Which I guess they will in just a second. But yeah, I mean, this keep is bugging me. <laughs> this keep is triggering an OCD that I don't have. It's, yeah. You look at that thing and it's like, I just YOLO someone in, I don't care who. Like, get D.Va in there, Lauba can jump away, like, again, it would be a bit of a suicide mission, but at some point you can decide whether or not that's actually worth it. Anyway, 60,000 damage for Cassia now. 80,000 for Sonya. She's leading in all the categories. Yeah, yeah girl's doing fine. 
keep down on each side. Core is not attacked. This is another weird one. These guys are actually playing on higher level more or less. I like it. First two games were already uh, did prove that to an extent. I guess the most one-sided one was probably the first map. But right now, this one is tight. Everybody wants to get that lead in the best of five now. It's all about the cams, all about the gems. Only two are missing for Wildheart Esports. Now, don't forget that they're actually a turn in behind. So they lost a lot of gems earlier, which is why they are now just waiting for the... It's actually the third where we were wave that they would have with this one. Everybody's guarding the turning points. Brightwing is even committing to turning her gems in. 29 gems now committed uh, and averted. Chromia hasn't really done that much damage compared to Sonya, obviously. She's still sitting at 65,000, so it gives her the number two spot in the game. But she hasn't taken over the numbers and established herself as the big boy damage dealer in this one. Uh, cams are all taken by now. Boss is, of course, also off the map. 47 gems for the red team. Here comes the engage. Apocalypse combo against Zarya. Yeah, and here's the cooldown reduction. Sonya is trying to follow all of this. She's eating a lot of damage, but she's also making sure that everybody else on the red team side is dropping in HP. They make a play for Diablo, who has to use the Hellgate to get out of harm's way. Again, the setup. Lulnados are there, but Jojo is down. Johanna down as Sonya murders her. Lauba is dead. And that gives more space to the blue team who take the opportunity to turn in their gems in the middle of the map. Yeah, job well done. Gems turned in and now of course you can try and push. And at this point, if you're 21 minutes into the game, you are hoping to end the game here. You are hoping not only to take a keep, you want to take the entire thing. Especially since there's 30 seconds until Johanna is going to be back. And without the tank at the front line, this is tricky. You still have D.Va, you still have Zarya, but still, there's a lot missing here. And they're going for it, and the top lane is also going to get pressure. So the keep is going to be under assault one way or another. But just look at how Sonya is murdering this thing. Zergling is just coming in and just slamming, slamming the core here. Gets attacked and might die, but he did so much work already, and they could right-click the shit out of it now. 40 HP, 40%, that's it, that's game number three. Wildheart Esports, they decided in their favor, they win two in a row to take the lead in the best of five Heroes of the Storm he series here in the CCL Losers Bracket. Game number four, it's Infernal Shrines. And this is honestly the first Heroes of the Storm map here today where we could see a winner emerge. Wild Heart Esports is at this point in the lead with a 2-1. And they're playing this out with Suljin. Yep, Zergling is playing uh, D.Va. We got Very Day on Stukov. Suljin played by Unaverted, going straight into the Bone Slicer over here. Buds on false sets, so a lot of auto attack damage with Justin on Diablo. Another great Diablo map, even better than the last one, by the way. Whereas crowd control is relying on X-Ray on Ana, we got the Quasar on Sonia, Dainu on Cassia, fourth time in a row now. Lauba on Jojo and Rutsu is playing Hanzo. Okay, so with this said, what we're looking at right now is um, actually on level one, the wingman. So no order attack build for false city at least. But yeah, what I want to talk about is that in uh, this particular case, if, of course, this is the loser bracket final, if you lose here, you're out. You are third place in the tournament, which still gives you, of course, quite a bit of prize money. But at the same time, you want to at least enter the grand final here and, of course, win the entire thing. I mean, there's a lot of money that goes around for the top two places. We have at the bottom of the map now, yeah, Justin still playing this out. So, ooh, they're trying to gank the top lane. I don't really think that's going to work for them, but yeah, there's at least some damage the D.Va got. But the Bumblebee skin, I like it. Best skin, also best Transformers video uh, movie. Bumblebee was kind of cool. Had one character that was kind of useless to the entire story, where to the day I don't know why they even implemented that thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. 
outside of that, the entire movie was fantastic. Can definitely recommend. If you're a little bit tired of the usual Michael Bay bullshit with just massive explosions and American flags flying around, which is pretty much the story of every single Michael Bay movie that was ever shot, then uh, Bumblebee is very nice. Especially the beginning is kind of cool and reminds a little bit, you know, of that old school Transformer style. So definitely the best one. So check it out if you haven't done that yet. But yeah, the skin is also pretty cool for Diva here, so I like that as well. We have at the same time now X-Ray playing this a little bit safe. One minute mark obviously triggered both of the teams going for their Khazra camps. We still have the third one at the bottom of the map that could be taken. Suljin hasn't really done a whole lot of stacking here. That's gonna... Suljin is one of those heroes that normally is more of an ARAM hero. If you have a hero's brawl happening, for example, then uh, you can really get insane stacks together with him. In a normal game, you're normally not in a position where you can make that work. So we're gonna see how exactly that's gonna play out for them. Suljin obviously got touched in the last patch too. Let's not forget about that. But generally speaking, he was always one of the heroes that you wouldn't see in a game like this too much just simply because it takes too long for him to stack properly if you're going up against an opponent that knows what they're doing. But at the same time, we have seen a couple of adjustments, especially with uh, Bone Slice as currently the talent. There was also a bit of a bug which has been removed through a hotfix. We'll see how much of an impact he's going to have here and also how much the uh, patch really impacted the build on Suljin as they're playing it out here. It can definitely be very tricky for the front line, but there's also blind available for two of the heroes, so they can play around this too. That, on the other hand, is a really nice engage and unaverted. Yeah, spray game on point as well. Nice, I like it. So, yeah, we're going to take another quick look at that. We're able to get the kill here. Beautiful connect. Just as Hansa wanted to jump away, he gets caught, he gets killed, and then, bam, there's the spray right there. That's how we want to see this. Objective is up now though, which means that the party is about to start. Level 7 talents aren't ready for the teams, but the blue team has taken a significant experience lead, which means they will... I mean, honestly, I think they're going to walk away with the objective. There's nearly half a level lead, that's going to give them a couple of seconds where they can take the lead over their opposition. So, we'll see if they can do that. But, yeah, time will tell. Devils gets attacked. Uh oh, that's someone you don't want to lose right now. And Justin dies. Justin is down, and well, there we go. We got the Vicious Assault. And Vicious Assault is actually one of the talents that got changed in the recent patch. The damage bonus is now increased from 35% to 45%, which is a pretty significant boost, uh, honestly. So that's pretty solid, honestly. That's, I mean, if you can mark a target, if you're not dealing with the blinds, if you can just, like, hammer away, that's a great thing to have. That damage advantage can really decide whether you kill a target or not. Now we have Stukov killed at the top lane, talking about it. And the red team is the one who does the work on the objective too. That kill against Diablo really stopped Wildtide Esports cold. They had a great bot with the advantage and experience, but then Dibbles dies, they have to give up the spot, they're losing out on experience too. And that kind of got nasty very, very quickly. Soldier is sitting at 3 stacks only, now keep in mind, once that he hits 15, he also gets a range increase. So it's going to be even safer after that, but he hasn't really been able to do a whole lot here yet. 20 stacks for Cassia at the same time now, and let's see what they can do. This should be an easy fort maybe even. I mean, thanks to this being a Frozen Punisher, you can disable the entire thing. Even if they don't get it, they will get the Fountain, and that's half the battle. And with a little bit more poke happening, they got really close. Oh, yeah, the minions! Winion time, nice! The Winions take it down. Job well done. Top side still, Sonya going up against Fortstead. Alrighty. Okay, so, there we go. Bottom of the map, camps are taken again. Quick look at the damage output. Ah, 8,000, 9,000 on Cassia. Sony looking pretty good here too. Suljin knocking at the 6k here as both of the teams are looking for level 10 talents. This time we only have a solo support for Wild Tide Esports. But level 10 is going to change a lot here. It's also going to tell us a little bit of how crazy they're going to go with that Suljin build. There's not really that much lockdown where I say like, okay, you gotta go into a guillotine here. So I'm not sure if they're going to try and trade damage and then play around the 20 or if they're just going for quick kills and hoping to follow up on a Diablo stun. If Diablo lands a good combo and you have a good team, that would be great. But right here, he gets it! Oh my god, the quick pick on the talent and he survives! Nicely done! Insta locks in his ultimate and survives. Well played. 
Taz Dingo is in and good on Unaverted. Perfect reaction from him here. Yeah, check this one out. Look at the level 10 talent when he gets it. When he gets the level 10, like he gets locked down here. Level 10 drops as he gets sucked in and he picks it and immediately uses it. Honestly, that wouldn't have been possible if he would have played with the lay here. But still, great reaction from him. Yeah, that's the power of picking your talents with hotkeys, everybody. I mean, as he gets sucked in by the Valkyrie, he gets level 10 and BAM! Uses it right away. Great play by him. Yeah, in this case, here comes the attack straight in for Buds. Trying to take him down too. 33 stacks by now. Top side pressure. Both of the teams are apparently accelerating this match a little bit by simply going for the structures right now and trading forts. And kills! Diva is down! Diva is dead. And down here at the bottom of the map, they can now try and also get the fort because top side fort is already down and the yeah <laughs> the fort is also destroyed. So yeah, they're, tra they're trading structures a little bit. Not really the best thing for Zuljin though. Again, he doesn't really have a lot of stacks yet. For Zuljin, the baseline is kind of important. You want to make sure that you first of all get the range increase at 15 stacks. You want to get the increased damage. And later on, the double cleave is really neat. So the longer the game lasts, the better for Zuljin usually. But at least in this game, he wasn't able to get a whole lot of stacks and damage yet. Oh, the zone out dibbles. I like it. And this is the way, this is the way that you have to play a meme strike. This is honestly something where I feel that NA has done a fantastic job. We had a couple of players in North America that used Meme Strike on Hanzo to its fullest extent. There's a couple, I think it was Madara with a few of the games that he played on Volskaya, where he absolutely murdered with the positioning on this thing and was able to zone out several heroes, isolate them from the rest of the team and then get kills. So a talent that was for a long time a total meme has found value. We had it in the past also on the European side with players like Mene or Mene's team doing some of that stuff. But I really like that now you have them playing a lot of level 20 and using them a bit more. Arrow is still the preferred one in most cases, but it's kind of cool to see it pop up every now and then. So yeah. Now, well, at this point, what else do we have? We got our level 13 talents, this time a little bit earlier for crowd control. Yeah, they get them quickly. Nano boosts up another 10 seconds. There's of course a chance. Explosion, trying to zone them out here. Hanzo, oh, Cassia gets away too. There's lightning breath and the immediate counterplay by Hanzo as he commits to the meme strike again. But they still got the nano boost that they could use here to empower Cassia a little bit if they wanted to. Level the 13 isn't ready for Wild Hard Esports, but they don't care. They are still brawling this one out. They lost two forts already, so they got to step it up a bit in these team fights, and they know it too. And let's have at it. Nah, not yet. They are trying to buy some time for the next minion wave to come in so that they can use this. So let's see what we're going to get with this one. Uh, right. Here comes the play. Starting to move in. Quick blind comes out. And unaverted. Now there's the 13. They have the, the thing is, the blue team still has the lead on points. I mean, red team is bringing it back now, but still. Seven stacks are coming in. 51, they go for Suljin again, and he pops his ult right away. Suljin survives, and here it is, the level 13 talent. Going into the eye of Suljin for more auto attacks. We got the giant killer now as well. Yeah, I really, I really, really, really don't like these giant killer picks if you don't go for your level 1 stacking. If you go already for a build that revolves around um, other setups, then why go for Giant Killer against this team in particular? Feels odd to me. Seems like it would be with the mage setup and maybe some side lane pushing much more effective. But either way, as is, he goes for it. Ooh, Butts just got caught too, but is able to fly out. Good for him. There was no stun available anymore, and therefore they couldn't interrupt him here. Virant Reaction is in now too. And, well, let's see. Mid lane is getting pressured, by the way. So does the uh, bot lane. So both of the lanes get pressure by the catapults. Pretty solid for crowd control, but the uh, objective is going over to the blue team this time. Two kills against six. So crowd control has done very, very well here. In kills. <laughs> Not on the objective. <laughs> Which is kind of the important one. But let's have a look. Because for now, the question is, how much can Wild Ad Esports do with this? I mean, they're going for keep here, right? So there's the push over. It's a mortar punisher this time. They open the side wall up. The gate is down too. So there's another attempt to go for the bird. And that's a kill. False that is down. Great Valkyries that we're seeing this game. 
Nicely played. The Nano boosted. Hanzo chipping out a bit more damage too. And they still maintain the lead in experience. Looking at the bot lane, by the way, that's a lot of damage done to the wall. And we're going to see that continue now. So they're most likely going to lose the next tower to Catapults. Yeah, Catapults are on the tower. That one is going to eat a lot of damage. In the middle, it has been damaged but not destroyed. So the map is looking quite nice for crowd control here. At this point, they are ahead. They have taken the lead in experience. They have taken the lead in kills. They are ahead in structures. They are also closing in on another talent advantage. Good stacks for Cassia. They're in a great spot, especially since Soldier stacks aren't that amazing. He's sitting at 9 stacks now. We're already 11 minutes into the game. So that's not really, not really strong for him. But he is obviously someone who is going to start scaling as the game continues. So you got to keep an eye on him and play this discipline if you want to take the game. All right. Camps are taken. They're painting the map red right now. They won game five. Crowd control, they won game five. They're doing whatever they can to bring this to game number five now. Level 10 talents are... Sorry, level 16 talents are in. And in an ideal world, you want to take the top four. As they do, you have a talent advantage. Wildheart isn't going to fight this. So push the lane. Take the structures down. And even the fountain. Even taking the opponent's camp. And obviously, the, uh, le the the talent lead forced the hand of Wildheart Esports. If they don't take this camp early, because normally you want to take it around the objective, they know it would have been invaded by crowd control. That's why they took it anyways. Now we got the No Mercy on level 16. Another talent, by the way, that got changed in the recent patch. Has some additional functionality right now. Uh, so you actually do some percentage damage now too. Uh, which is kind of neat. But, yep, yeah, Dino is down here at the bottom. Nine stacks for uh, Suljin, 64. There's no real brawls happening anymore. And it's all about the objective now. Could have delayed the capture on the Siege Train camp, by the way. Could have delayed this a little bit more. Waited for the objective here to spawn. But they're now defending also at the bot lane. 16 versus 16 times. And honestly, this is really the dangerous part because you're ahead everywhere, right? You are ahead in structures, you had an experience, you are ahead in kills. But once that you are 16 versus 16, that's still an even talent fight. So crowd control, as much as they are controlling the map right now and doing a great job here, they also got to be careful. Because it's easy to just get baited into a bad fight when you're so far ahead and when you feel you have all of the momentum in your hands. And if you lose the team fight, then the shit is still going to hit the fan. You're going to start losing structures and your opponent can carry the momentum depending on how many of your heroes they took down. Maybe even deep into your base. Death timers are scaling as the game or increasing as the game continues. So now that we're 13, 14 minutes in, you have a lot more time to do damage when you're able to get a couple of kills against the opponent's team. So the poke is starting up. Diablo does not have the rewife yet. He's sitting at 90 stacks now. And the objective is up for grabs. As we have a little bit more stacking happening from Dino. He wants the big numbers on the level 1 talent. Sonya slamming away. Top side gets pushed. Remember, the keep is open. Wall has been destroyed. There's a catapult pushing in with the 2, but technically crowd control should be fine there. Yeah, blue team is zoning them already a bit. Okay. 13 to 14. The minion stacks fairly even. Sleep Dart connects. They're doing good damage to Diablo. It's an arcane punisher that we're talking about. Blue team is trying to get some damage connected too. Always poking slowly, but they are starting to fall behind now. The zoning continues, and at least for now, it's looking good for crowd control. But the blue team is looking for an opportunity. Souls are there for Dibbles. Can be a bit more aggressive. They're trying to go for Sonya. Spin to win is there. Diablo with a lightning fury, and the kill against Hanzo. Hanzo is down. They're turning it, though. They're trying to get the kill in against Suljin and Zergling. Both down tappen. And Suljin, the balls of steel on Unaverted, not using his ult. He was insanely low, under 100 hit points, and he just didn't pop the R button. Oh my god, the lockdown, and they are winning this one. Wow. Nicely done by Wildheart. They take the kill. They take a third one as well. Hanzo dies first, Johanna second, Sonya dies, and that turns the game on its head. The experience gap has been closed. The keep has received a bit more damage. And the objective with only three missing for crowd control gets taken by Wildheart Esports. Great play by them here. Nicely done.
Now they are also the ones that will not only take the fort at the bottom of the map, they can maybe even go for keep, especially since Buds is getting some extra experience for the team. He can fly in at any point, can move through the middle, maybe take another wave as well. They can open the wall at the bottom. This is troublesome for crowd control. They were hoping for a very different situation here and they lost the entire leading experience that we are building up earlier. 12 stacks by now for Suljin. He only needs 3 more on the baseline and he's gonna have the range increase which is gonna make him more dangerous. A lot more safer of course too. And yeah, they have to give the keep up. Sonya's still not back. By now, finally back in the game. But this is a problem, especially since the level 20 is now ready. This is a massive push. This is a fantastic opportunity. It's a huge deal. Wildheart, they have a chance to end the game here. They have a ch chance to go to the grand final. But they might have to push back. Shields are about to fall. They're getting the damage in. They're focusing in on it. And Suljin can pop the ult. Guys, they're ending it. They're ending it right here. They have too much damage. There it is. Wildheart Esports turn the game around. 6.5 out of 10 move from the team in blue as they take crowd control down and move on to the grand final to fight against simplicity for the championship nicely done Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.